today is a really great topic, an interesting topic, because what it really says is that, and I think many of us go through this, really working to find our right work. Renee, Earth Queen, thank you for joining us. <laughs> you know, many of us go through life trying to figure out what is our purpose? Uh, what should we be doing with our lives? And the law of work, which is really the, the law of action, the seventh law of success, really says that work is an integral part of your life. What you do to earn a living, what you do to live your making is an integral part of your life. So the choices you make as to what you want to do with the hours that you have been allotted is critical. And so we'll be reading today from pages 131 and 132 of the 12 Universal Laws of Success. Let's see if I can make this go away. I guess not. All right, let's see. We have a great phone here that has all kinds of niche things on it. There we go. Okay. So when we look at the idea of right work, we talked yesterday about your right work, the work that you're most comfortable in, the work that that seems to be the job for you. So the question is, how do you find your right work? I'll tell a story. When my son, Sean, was a young man, I guess he was in his early 20s, and he said, Dad, how do you figure out what you want to do with your life? How do you figure out what to do? And my advice was to, once you determine what you love doing, then figure out a way to get paid for doing it. He said, well, I love being a DJ. So I said, well, you're good at it too. So he went to the radio station and of course he had no real experience on air as a DJ and didn't have any, you know, hadn't gone for any official training. So of course he didn't get the job, but he made a critical decision. He decided to work in the station. The only job opening they had available was janitorial, cleanup man. And he took the job Meanwhile, especially at night, nobody wanted that particular shift. I think it was like four to 12, something like that. Anyway, nobody really wanted it. He took the shift. And basically when he was there, he was more watching than doing. He was watching how stuff works. He was learning how to use the machines. Every chance he got when nobody was around, he'd start playing the machine, learning how they operated. So lo and behold, one night, the 12, the, well, I guess the 12 to seven uh, DJ, did not show up. So the station owner called and said, where is he? So Sean says, I don't know. He says, well, can, can, can you put on what they call it, a bus or something, put in one of those cassettes. And so Sean says, I can do it, I can do it. The guy says, look, just hold tight, just put the cassette on till I get there. Sean goes in, man, he hits the switch and he introduces himself to the world. He says, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, this is DJ Love bringing you the music that will excite you. And if I, wow, what a voice. Well, by the time the owner got there, that station had a new DJ. And so when we look at our right work, let's read here from page 131, because once you find your right work, you'll never work again. Make the most of your present situation. Develop a positive wholesome attitude towards work in general, and specifically toward the work you are doing right now. In other words, love your job. Whatever you're doing, love it. You know, it may not be what you wanted to do, but love it anyway, because it creates a vibration that will help you move on to the next level. Sometimes you find yourself working at something you do not particularly care for especially when you're just getting started out in your working career, when you're at the bottom of the success ladder. However, it is your attitude and your reaction to the work at hand, to the work at this point, that determines if you will continue at the bottom or move up the success ladder. So this is interesting. Whatever you're doing now, whatever work you're doing right now, the attitude that you, um, that you demonstrate towards that work will to a, large, to a large extent determine how you move up the ladder. 
Because believe me, if you have a great attitude about your job, no matter if it's emptying trash cans, and your attitude is, man, I'm the best trash can emptier on the planet. My trash cans are always clean. If you drop your sandwich in it, you can pick it up. Okay, hopefully not. But the idea is when you demonstrate a certain attitude toward your work, believe me, you radiate a vibration and those around you will see it, particularly your boss. If you constantly complain about your present work, blaming others, blaming yourself for your condition, you will probably not progress too far up the success ladder at that particular position. So on your job, if you're known as a complainer, nothing is right. They should have done this. They should have done that. Boy, management don't know what they're doing. I mean, if you get that, you might say um, handle, guess what? You may as well leave because you're not going anywhere on that job. And that's what happens when you're a complainer and one who always finds fault in the job in yourself and other people, you will go from job to job, always unhappy, always complaining, but never progressing up the success ladder. However, if you take charge of your attitude, take charge of the condition and see it from a good perspective, See the positive aspects of your present work. See the good aspects of your present work situation. When you can do that, then you are literally laying the foundation for growth. You are laying a spiritual foundation for positive change towards your right work. This is interesting, folks. When you demonstrate a positive attitude about whatever you're doing. Let me tell you a couple of things you're doing. Number one, you're honoring time because the fact that you are engaged in doing a particular task at a particular place, when you show a positive attitude about it, when you show that you enjoy doing it, when you show that you are concerned about doing a good job, you literally honor the time that you're spending. You know, the time question is always, what is the best use of my time right now? in light of my goals, my vision, and my purpose. Well, sometimes your goals, your vision, and your purpose may not be that clear, but the fact that you enjoy what you're doing right now opens up, almost opens a window to help you see your right work. Recognize that your present work is for a purpose. Everything that we do is in accordance with a creator, a vibration, a consciousness that we experience. When you recognize that your present work is for a purpose, then believe that this purpose is to develop divine qualities of patience, persistence, understanding, and discipline. Now, this is powerful, folks. On your job, when you develop those qualities of patience, persistence, understanding, and discipline, believe me, it creates a vibration that attracts attention to you. The whoever's in charge, whoever's running the show, whoever can help you move to the next level will see it, and they will respond. You must continue doing it and have faith. No one, you never want someone to feel that you're just doing it for show. But when they feel that you're doing it from your heart, it transforms the environment. You'll get the promotion. Someone will come over and say, you know, uh, I see you really take pride in your work. You know, there's an opening upstairs in this other department. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm being put in charge of a new group now, and I like the way you handle yourself. Would you like to join our team? You see, through your attitude and through the way that you relate to your present situation, the world gets a, a picture of who you really are. Plus, you create the vibration of clarity. Many times when you do and enjoy what you're doing, it opens up a center in your consciousness so that you can see more and be more. As these qualities of patience, persistence, understanding, and discipline develop, 
they will lead you to your right work. When you look at your work as an external expression of your internal desires, in other words, look at your job from within out, then you must do your very best in performing this work in order for your desires to be fulfilled. So if the work that you're doing is an external expression of who you really are, then it behoo behooves you to do your very best because then it reveals that you have a standard of excellence, that you have a sense of completion, that you have a beautiful work ethic. One of the number one complaints I find in the job market, we did, we used to do a lot of training for the uh, construction industry, preparing people for the workforce. And the number one complaint was the lack, was the lack of work ethic, the lack in pride of doing the job well, the lack in persistence to get a job done. You know, some people will quit with an excuse and act as though the excuse was, was a good thing. You know, if you can quit with a good excuse, it definitely, that is not like success. That is not completion. The Bible and Ecclesiastics 9th chapter 10th verse says this. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all your might. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. If you hold back on your work, then you also hold back on the fulfillment of your internal desires. If you hold back on your work, you hold back on the rewards that could, come, that could come to you. At the beginning stages of your success journey, your internal desires may not be clearly defined in your conscious mind, but it is through the principle of work that your internal desires are revealed to you. The fact that you have the discipline, the fact that you have the dedication literally says to the consciousness, to the God mind, to the good mind, that you're ready to get the message, that you're ready to move to the next level. Give your body, mind, and spirit to your work. Dr. King said, if you're going to be a street sweeper, be the best street sweeper on the planet. You sweep your streets so clearing that people can eat off your streets and they'll come by and say, that was a street swept by John, the best street sweeper on the planet. He loves his job. When you give your mind, spirit, and body to your work, to your job, committed to do a good job, then you're really expressing a divine purpose that you were put here to do a good job no matter what. See, when people see you dutiful about some things, then they can understand that you can do, you'll be dutiful about all things. This committed action in a job that you have at hand will guide you to your right work and ultimately to your life purpose. So those of you on the call today, on the class today, on Instagram, on Facebook, please share this message with others, especially some young people. Be sure to like our broadcast and make some comments of maybe how, you're, how you've been able to put these principles to work and share them with other people. This idea of your right work is so critical because when you determine that you love what you're doing, it opens up a center in you because you literally create joy within, which then prepares you to attract joy from without. And as that harmonic begins to develop, you know, you start off, maybe you hear very often stories, a person started as a janitor and over a period of 20 or 25 years, he rose or she rose to become CEO of a major corporation. It happens. And it happens because the person is clear about their right work, that whatever they are doing, they do it with all their might. That there's never a time that you see them half-stepping, not giving their all, that whatever it is, they do it with all their might. And in that doing, 
you will find your right work, which will lead you to your vision and to your purpose. Wow. Thank you so much today for joining us, for being with us. This is Dr. Herbert Harris reading from our book, The 12 Universal Laws of Success Super Achiever Edition, available on Amazon and, of course, available on our website, www www.herbertharris.com www.herbertharris.com and any of you who buy it through our website I'm going to send you the free audio book that goes with it and if you buy it on Amazon and I recommend buy it wherever you buy it if you send me the sales receipt for buying it send it to herbert at herbertharris.com take a picture of it I'll get you the free 12 universal laws of success audio book over six hours of the recorded reading of the 12 Universal Laws of Success. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> what you say, baby. I love it. Whatever you do, know that you can be what you want to be. That you can do whatever you want to do. That you can have whatever you desire. If you believe in you, take action on a daily basis always knowing that the best is yet to come. And so it is.